All right, so what we're going to cover now is um, exploring data in the, uh, in the explore mode. We're going to look at uh, a test mix that was run, and it will tell us about how well our system is working, both uh, chromatography-wise and in the mass spectrometer. Um, the first thing we need to do is go look for the data in the proper place. Remember, the data is organized into projects, so we're looking for test mix only and test mix only again, which tells me what this is. Well, obviously where we're keeping the test mix data. So let me go ahead and open a data file, going to explore on the navigation bar. And let's try test mix 717. And let's look at sample 2. And what opens up in front of here, I'm going to minimize the navigation bar for clarity. And what opens up in here uh, is really a window with, with four windows inside. And the, the first one of these windows on the left side of the screen is a list of uh, masses or inside brackets. And these masses correspond to um, the masses that were used to create uh, or that were selected for product dining uh, scanning. Uh, and these, these columns, mass, intensity, and time can be sorted by simply by clicking at the top uh, of the column. So here you can see I've, I've sorted them according to uh, descending mass, so 337 is the first, uh, first mass here. Uh, the, the first of these quadrant of windows here, the first one says, at the top it says tick, and what tick is is the total line chromatogram of all the MRM transitions. We've talked a little bit about MRM transitions already, and those are the parent to daughter mass uh, transitions uh, and when you overlay them all, that is add them all up, what you end up with is this total line chromatogram. So this is the chromatogram that you may be familiar with seeing when you look at, say, any type of chromatography, and that's, that's what you're getting here. Um, below it uh, is a window that's called XIC, or extracted ion chromatogram, of a particular uh, MRM transition. So the one that we're looking at here is actually the 337.2 to 188. And that is the MRM transition that corresponds directly to uh, fentanyl. And it, we've seen it here, which is good, because that's what we were intending to see. Um, in the top right uh, is something called um, positive MRM. This means this is the MRM. This is an entire MRM scan. Remember, the MRMs are a list of mass parent-to-daughter transitions. Uh, and what the instrument does is it looks for all of them and then it records this graph that you see here in the top in the top right. And you can see, if I zoom in real close, that there is a, oops, I messed it up. If I zoom in real, real well there, well, try one more time. You can see 337.2 to 188 and there's a big blue line here which corresponds to uh, fentanyl, which is the same as the one here, and this dotted line here represents where this time slice is here. So this MRM time slice is this dotted line, and it's also represented by the dotted line here. Now in the bottom right corner is something called EPI, which means Enhanced Product Ion Scan. Enhanced just means we use the uh, uh, ion trap capability of, uh, of the instrument. What this is is a Product Ion spectra, or this is a full scan mass spec for, for fentanyl as it's been selected and then fragmented inside uh, the collision cell. So these are the primary, this is the primary way that we uh, analyze data in an, in an IDA type experiment. An IDA type experiment is where we've linked one mass spectrometry experiment, MRM, with another type which is enhanced product ion. We sort of uh, put the data all together and we, we use this, this screen to look, at, to look at and process that data. So what we are going to look at here is a test mix and the test mix has a number of components in it and what I'm going to do is go through each one of those components, kind of explain why it's there and, um, and I'll tell you whether or not this instrument is ready to have actual case samples run on it. So the first in descending order of mass, we're going to start with uh, with uh, fentanyl, which is 337.2. To make it clear, what I'm going to do is export all these graph windows using this export button right here to make it easier uh, to see. And now what I'm going to do is delete 
some panes that are a little bit confusing. And so here's three of the four panes we just saw. Again, the tick is here. This is the extracted ion chromatogram. And below here is the product ion scan for fentanyl. So this is the full, the full, full scan mass spectra for fentanyl. Now, fentanyl is a very low dose drug. And so because it's such a low dose drug, uh, even small amounts of that drug in a person's uh, biological specimens could be significant in postmortem findings. And, and so what we do is we put fentanyl in this test mix specimen at a low level to make sure not only that the instrument would see it via using the MRM experiment, and you can see there's quite a nice, quite a nice peak of it here, but also that this peak would be tall enough to trigger the second experiment, the EPI experiment. So what we're looking for down here is to see that fentanyl has a good mass spectra, which it does. And I think if I right click on this bottom one and say search library, Hopefully I will get a match, and sure enough, that's what I do. What I get here is a match with my unknown fentanyl at the top and my fentanyl in the library, which I've created previously at the bottom. So you can see that these match up very well. In fact, the, the one at the top looks a little better. So, so I can say I have fentanyl. So I know that I can now detect low-dose drugs in my specimen. Let's go to the next drug. The next drug on my list here, 332. It's 332 to 95, 332.1 to 95, and this corresponds to peroxicam. Um, again, let's delete this pane here. Peroxicam, I should delete this pane here as well. We've already know, we've already looked at the fact that uh, the instrument can t detect low, uh, low levels of fentanyl. So I'm not going to use this to look at peroxicam's mass spec, other than to know that this is in fact peroxicam. What I'm really looking for peroxicam here is how much is this peak tailing? And in fact, it's not too bad. You can see a little tailing here. Uh, our experience in the laboratory at the GBI has been that peroxicam is particularly sensitive to column conditions. And so when the column is not working very well, <clears throat> what, what will happen is peroxicam will start to, uh, this peak will go down, it'll begin to blob, or it will just disappear completely. And so the fact that we're seeing Proxicam and it's relatively sharp, even though there is a little bit of tailing going on, tells me that this column is okay for, uh, at least in terms of Proxicam, for, uh, for cases to be run on it. So it's, we're two for two for good. Going down a little bit further, you can see because Proxicam tails out in its mass spec, let's look at this again, because it tails out many, uh, a little bit away here, you can see that it actually triggered an EPI scan several times. You can see the little great dotted line jump around there as, it, as each one of these uh, masses in this list over here represents a separate uh, product ion scan. Let's just go down here. All right, the next drug on our list is a very popular drug these days. At least it's getting some attention in the news, which is oxycodone. Uh, oxycodone is a opiate analgesic, and the reason it is in our in our test mix is because um, there are a number of drugs that come out at the beginning portion of the of the uh, chromatogram. So this is things that come out say one to five minutes or so, or one to four minutes. These this is the region if you're if you're analyzing biological specimens. This is the region of the chromatogram that's probably going to have the most amount of biological material coming off along with your drugs. And one of the things we've talked about for, ele uh, for electrospray, which is the type of ionization source we're using here, is uh, ion suppression. And so the reason we put oxycodone in this, in this test mix is because it's in a part of, the, part of the chromatogram that's the most susceptible to ion suppression, even though you could get that anywhere in the, in the, in the chromatogram. So, we're seeing good oxycodone here, and I'm seeing at the bottom is a good mass spectra for oxycodone. There's lots and lots of good small ion detail, so I know that I'm getting a good uh, mass spectra, so I, I can say early eluders are not going to be, be affected by anything in the system that might suppress their ionization. The next drug on the list here is uh, methadone. 
Methadone is another opiate analgesic, and you notice that it comes out uh, much later. Um, methadone is placed in this test mix because one of the features of the IDA experiment is that um, uh, you're allowed to go, you're allowed to sample the most intense peak for a certain period of time, and then you get to go and look for any peaks that might be buried underneath. Because if you always selected the, the tallest peak for a product ion scan, then you would just you would never see what was smaller buried underneath. And unlike GC, where things can be the peaks are very sharp, uh, the peaks in in an LC tend to be much more broad. And because they're much more broad, uh, the pa the possibility exists that uh, is much more likely to exist that uh, small peaks may be buried underneath. And what we've done is we've placed uh, methadone in this test mix, which roughly colutes with the front part of another drug, amitriptyline. And what we're making sure is this very small amount of methadone uh, is in fact gets triggered for an EPI. So what we're testing here is something called peak masking. So we're making sure that our instrument not only gets a mass spectra of the tallest peak, but the one that's the one that's buried inside. So this is actually a test of our IDA criteria. Okay? And you can see even though it's a low dose, I have a good mass spectra for methadone here, and it matches. In fact, it's much better than the library. In fact, that's not even, there it is. This is, there we go. That's methadone. It's matching up pretty well. Um, all right. The next two drugs here, 281 and 278, two, 281, Point two, which is, goes to the, the product ion, uh, or the transition ion 86, and 278 here, which is really uh, 278.2 to 233. These are imipramine and amitriptyline, and the purpose of these two drugs is to make sure that the chromatography of the system is working overall. And so what we like to do here is examine whether or not these two peaks uh, are resolved from one another. And the way I can do that is I can do an extracted ion chromatogram for just those two drugs. And the way I do that is go to XIC, which is extracted ion chromatogram. Then I need to select the two masses, or the two transitions. It's 278.233 and 281. control. If I look at them, you can see here <clears throat> that amitriptyline and amipramine are more or less resolved from each other. They're not overlapping at all. So these two drugs are very similar in structure, and so we're looking to see that they're are separated by the, the solvent system that we've prepared. So they're, they're very well separated from each other, so we consider that great. Close this. Finally, we look at the last compound, the lowest one in the list, which is 247. 247 to 98 is mepivacaine. Mepivacaine is an internal standard that we use for virtually all our analysis within the laboratory. And so what we're looking for here is uh, just sort of overall system suitability. We're very used to seeing mepivacaine, so if it looks small or broken up or the chromatography looks bad, then we know something may be wrong with the system. So it's our final check uh, to whether or not the, the test mix is okay. So, if I review my test mix in total, actually we'll just look at the pivot cane one more time. Let's export this one. Um, just zoom in on the portion that has stuff in it. What we're looking for is, uh, the last thing we're kind of looking for in the test mix is we're looking for baseline. And you can zoom in on the baseline. You can see if the baseline is really less than 2 e to the 4th or something, or something like that, uh, then, you know, the instrument is not inherently dirty before you even run any samples on it. So what I'm seeing here is a pretty low baseline. You can see the baseline. It looks horrible, but it's only 500 or 1,000 counts, which is practically nothing. Um, so that's, that's the test mix we've created.